lifting up uh, a season, beginning a season of lifting up and celebrating a new year of life in this community, but remembering the stories of this place and lifting up the stories of this community and to dream about the stories that God might be writing in the future. And so about, about two years ago, uh, the story of Open started with a dream. Uh, it, it literally started with a dream. I mean, it did in like the big picture of dream and vision, but it actually did start with a dream, too. I dreamed about Open on the Saturday night before our first gathering together. Um, we gathered in this, in this space for the very first Sunday, um, but before that, I dreamed about it. And in my dream, as we gathered in this place, uh, people began to show up, which was just a dream at that point, because we had no idea who was going to come. And so that was pretty amazing. Um, and as in my dream, people began to arrive, and the community began to fill up, and the community that began to happen was beautiful. It was vibrant and diverse. It was full of energy and conversation and hospitality and authenticity. It was everything that we'd been dreaming about, and it was beautiful. And so in my dream, I look down at my, at my watch, and I see that it's 1155, um, and that we never actually started the service together. It was one of those dreams where I looked down, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we haven't actually like, done open. We haven't done church together. We haven't done any songs. I forgot to preach a sermon. It was one of those dreams. Luckily, I was, I was appropriately dressed in my dream at that time. But other than like startling, awake, all freaked out, I just kind of went with it in my dream. I was like, oh, it's all good, though. We'll start next week. Um, that way I don't have to write another sermon. I'll just do it next week. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you for coming to our first one. But it made sense kind of in, in dream logic. Because in real life, the dream of Open had not been about music or teaching or service. Those were resources. To, the dream had been about what that helps us create. It had been about community, about being a people together, a family of God, a body of Christ in the language of our faith tradition. The dream had been about you, a community that welcomes and affirms all. A faith community that was truly open, with open hearts and open minds and open doors and open arms to God and to each other, as we say. That was the dream. The dream was you and you and you and me, brought together by the loving God who is with us and among us. And what could a God do in a community of faith with love at its center and at its heart? What could God do in a community of faith through those who gather? That was the dream. And the dream was for the hundreds who are yet to come, but seeking of the thousands who may never come, but know a little bit more that there is a place that lifts up the loving, open heart of a God because of you, because of this community. That was the dream. And so if some Sunday we just forget to start, it's going to be okay. Uh, we'll just go with it. And so that dream is the community of Open, the community that God is building here. And it's beautiful, and it is a little wild, uh, but it's a lot beautiful. Uh, and not just because you were such incredibly cool people, that's a given, but because something happens when we gather in a community with each other, with God's infinite love at the center, when we gather and it's a community that recognizes the sacred worth of each other and that seeks to cherish and cultivate it. And we begin to see and experience and encounter God in ways that we never could have imagined on our own, with a vision more complete and nuanced than we ever could by ourselves. And so here's kind of where that thinking comes from. It comes from maybe the central ethic of our faith tradition. You see it in places like Genesis 127, that we are created, each of us, in the image of God. So Genesis 127 says that God created humankind, like all of us, in the image of God. In the image of God, they were created. The writer writes it twice there, just to make sure we catch on to the heart of this, that all of us, you and me in this room and beyond, all of us in our diversity are created in the image of God. In our loves and in our laughter, in our uniqueness, in our idiosyncrasies, in our hopes, in, in our dreams, in our creativity, and in our cares, we reflect, each of us, a facet of that infinite gem of divinity, which is such a beautiful thought. But it points us toward the sacred importance of community for our faith. If God is beyond our comprehension, then we need each other's unique reflection of divinity that we might experience and encounter 
and embrace more and more of a complete picture of who our God is. And so your story, your journey, your dreams and delights, your uniquenesses and idiosyncrasies are indispensable and important, built to be part of something infinitely sacred. You bear, and as a community, we bear together the image of God in our world. It's like it's a spiritual version of the power of what happens when the Avengers all assemble together, right? Um, it's just that this is way cooler, and there's less destruction, and uh, it's not three hours long, and so that's better. But if at any point you need an intermission, feel free to get up and, uh, and stretch your legs too. So sometimes in churchy-type settings, we don't always feel that our story is valued part of this. Um, part of that is that often the only person who gets to tell a story is the dude with the face mic up at the front. And and so I'm so incredibly grateful for those of you who've been a part of sharing your story with us, who've, who've let us tell your story or told it yourself in our gatherings or in community or in small group settings, places like Real Talk Y'all where we get to be and ask, uh, ask real questions. Your story is so incredibly important. Your experience of God has things to teach us that no one else can. Your story is valuable. And so over this journey, learning from you and from your story, I myself think that I have grown more over these last years than of any other time in my faith journey, I think. I've been encouraged by you. I've been enlightened and challenged and changed by being in community of faith with you. I've grown in love for my neighbor, I've grown in love for God, and a deep reverence and love for the faith that we share, and in love for the God whose beautiful image you reflect. And so a lot has changed in me over these last years. For one, I've now decided that I am going to read the Harry Potter series, finally, along the way. And so thank you for that. <laughs> I know I've actually never read Harry Potter, believe it or not. Um, so I've got, I've got work to do. We all have growth to do. We're on a, on a path here. So for many of us, though, um, sometimes the reason we don't think that our story is a valid part of this is because we didn't necessarily feel like our story was welcome in faith spaces. Uh, our faith was central to our lives, but our real lives didn't always feel at home at the center of our faith communities. Maybe you felt that way before, uh, that doors were closed to you, to the real you, uh, because of, of who you are or how you think or how and who you love, uh, because of doubts you have or questions or your story or your history. Uh, maybe it's just that, that you can't seem to pull off the Sunday best. It's just a miracle that you get out of the Sunday, Saturday pajamas um, in order to get here on Sunday morning. For whatever reason, we haven't always felt like our real life was at home in this. And if you've ever felt or heard that message, um, so many have, I'm so incredibly sorry because that is not the heart of God. As we've been saying clearly here in this community, the heart of God is love and the heart of God is open to all and open to you, at work in you, no matter what. The God who created you loves you and all people in the depth of your spirit and the truth of who you are, no matter what, and your story and the image of God that you reflect are valued and indispensable because they show us the heart of God in a way that no one else can. And so your story is at the center of who God is calling you and in some ways us to be as well. One of the places that we see that is after Easter. And so uh, we talked to those who were gathered around instructions about what to do next, which is important for us to listen to because in many ways we're still kind of living in that next part of the story. And so here is how it's recorded in the book of Acts. Uh, there's, it's kind of this little novella in our scripture library about what comes next. And so here's what's recorded of Jesus's instructions to those gathered. It says this in, in Acts 1.8. It says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, Jerusalem was the capital, the seat of empire and religion in their day. And so Jesus says, bear witness to life and to love and to the way that I have shown you in that place. Judea was, was sort of the outer region there. Bear witness there as well. And, and Samaria was just like 
some area out there. He's just sending them out. Go into some area and be witnesses. Sorry, that is like a terrible preacher pun. I'm so sorry for that, but uh, thank you for your generosity of laughter. And this, that. So the Samaria was not just some area out there. It was incredibly important, and what it represents was incredibly important. So it was, uh, some of you are just now getting uh, what I was saying. Um, <laughs> it was a region that was across borders of language and culture. Samaritans practiced a different religion than Judaism of the day, and by the Jewish culture, they were looked down upon deeply in Palestine by the dominant culture as, as less worthy, as somehow outsiders. And Jesus says, cross that border and go and meet people and carry the love and life and welcome and affirmation, the peace and reconciliation of God with you. Go and bear witness to the love of God for all people. And finally, he says, go to the ends of the earth. Bear this witness with you. Every border you cross, every place that you go, everywhere you go, bear witness to the life and the love of God in Christ. So I brushed over that word witness uh, because, honestly, that word witness sometimes brings up connotations of of witnessing, right, if you grew up in the traditions that I did, of pamphlets and posters and bullhorns and badgering, of maybe a coercive religion of judgment and fear. Uh, But that was not what Jesus had in mind, Uh, because besides, none of those words that I just listed reflect the way of Jesus or the character of God at all. But instead, that word witness comes out of the Greek legal system, Uh, Just like it does, just like witness appears in our legal system today, a witness is one who is called not to argue or to give their opinion, but simply to share what they have seen and what they've heard, what they've witnessed, to share their own story, their story. And for those who encountered Jesus, it was to share their story of the profound love of God that welcomed and affirmed, that liberated and loved, that embraced and empowered and set them free to live flourishing and full. Not coercing or condemning, but constantly giving all that we might all know the invitation of a God who loves us completely. They were there to share and to bear witness to that love from their own story. In all of its diversity, they were Jew and Greek and Ethiopian and Egyptian and fisherman and philosopher and young and old and from Jerusalem or from some area out there. But every one of them bared witness to God's transforming work and transforming love for all. And what an empowering, inviting message that is. That wherever you go, whoever you are, we are called to bear witness that your story in this matters. That who you are and where you came from and your journey along the way with all of its twists and turns and jaunts and journeys and struggles and seeking that your story bears witness to the life and love of God. That your story bears witness to that, to what you've experienced in a way that no other story can. And so we need your story, your sacred image in the picture that we are building in our relationship with God. And so maybe you think that your story isn't much, uh, that it isn't pretty, or maybe you think that your story somehow disqualifies you. Well, our faith story is full of people who thought that they weren't much or that they were disqualified, but that God welcomed and loved with unqualified love and lifted their stories to be a part of this big story that gives us hope and a better vision of God's wide and deep love. In those very places that our story perhaps have left us along the way, chipped and cracked, those are in some ways the most important parts of our story because those are the places that glimmer and shine when the light of God hits them to remind us that God's love and peace and God's gracious healing and hope are at work every step of our journey, especially those unsteady steps. And so in the depth of your spirit and the truth of who you are, let your story bear witness. In Denton and in Dallas and even to Oklahoma, believe it or not, even to the ends of the earth. So there's times along the way when, when bearing witness will require 
of us words. Um, you could do interpretive dance, perhaps, if you wanted to, to express it, but there's times when it calls us to speak. But our life there begins, and the communities of Scripture affirmed, that bearing witness is first and ultimately and most importantly about beginning and bearing witness with something deeper than words. It's about living lives that bear witness to love. And so here's how the community of John stated this, as Crystal read earlier for us. Dear children of God, let us love not in word or speech, but in action and genuineness, truthfulness, in action and in genuineness. Or to be more alliterative, because you know I love alliteration, in action and authenticity, let us love, is what the community wrote. So let us bear witness to the love of Christ in our world by acting from a place of our authentic story, bearing witness to that love of God that embraces us, that all-welcoming, grace-giving, seeker-seeking, justice-doing, reconciling, transforming, always-hoping, never-stopping love. In all of the places we go, to the ends of the earth, even to Oklahoma, God calls us sometimes. And I'm sorry, is anybody from Oklahoma? Oh, uh, the Brian back there. Oh, Darren back there in the back. I, I should have known it by the OU shirt that you always wear around here. <laughs> so I'll say to you, Darren, even to Austin, bear witness to the love of God. Right? Let, it do a, let us do it from the authenticity of our own story, for the authentic flourishing of our neighbor. As so we listen and we value their story just as Christ values ours. So that authentic story and that authentic encounter of God is built into every invitation that God gives us to bear witness, to simply live from the truth of what we've seen and what we've heard and experienced in our own lives. And so think of your own story in those places where you've experienced divine love, where you've experienced welcome and grace, where you've experienced forgiveness and patience. The communities in scriptures wrote over and over that the call of God on our life is that in that same way that we have experienced the love of God to share it with others. They see these things like this in Romans 15, 7. Welcome, therefore, as just as Christ has welcomed you. Or reconcile as you've been reconciled. Bear with, give grace, forgive as you've been forgiven. Live in love as Christ has loved you, Ephesians 5, 2 says. It's this turn that we have been loved and we have seen and experienced and are experiencing that in our life and let it flow over that we might love in that same way. And sometimes that means being ready to offer words of life. Just as someone along the way spoke words of life to you on your journey. And it may seem scary to do that sometimes. But in those moments where we're living in action and authenticity and loving in that way, there will be moments of just the right time in our relationships with others, in all authenticity and love, to speak words of life to those around us. And in those moments, there is nothing that is more life-giving. To say to someone who needs to hear it at just the right time, God knows you and sees you and loves you, that God is with you right now, to those who feel unseen and unknown and unloved, to do that as an authentic act. Those words bear witness to the love of God in our world, and they bring life, and they can waken and empower and stir to life stories that seem like they're closed. And so I want to share with you a story of, of an invitation uh, that changed the trajectory of a life of someone here in our community. And that person is uh, our friend Leighton Hernandez, who's going to come up here to the front and share a little bit about, uh, come on up here to the stage, Leighton, share a little bit about Leighton's journey with us. I'm going to grab some stools. Yeah, grab one of your own. Thank you. Some, you're, you are self-sufficient, Leighton. I appreciate that. Cool. So everybody, welcome Leighton to the stage. <laughs> cool. How are you? I'm good. Cool. I have notes. 
I'm near this. <laughs> That's awesome. So in this picture, uh, Leighton is wearing a robe and uh, a stole, not because Leighton is clergy or, or Leighton is a wizard. I'm not sure about that. But because Leighton is about to graduate very, very soon. Um, so uh, I wanted to catch you before you uh, head off to the next stop here and hear a little bit of your story. And so um, tell us, Leighton, uh, a little bit about where you were in relationship to, to God and the church um, at the beginning of, of the story that we're telling. So Leighton came to open on the very first day, <laughs> on the first day, the one that I dreamed about. Leighton was one of those who showed up. And so tell us a little bit about where you were on that first day. Um, so I kind of gave up on the idea of church. Um, I try to find a place to call home for a very long time, and I just, it's kind of never fit. Um, I would always show up, and uh, people would accept parts of me, but not all of me. And so I was like, okay, I don't need this anymore. Um, I never gave up on God. Um, I was like, okay, I can do this at home. I can read my Bible, mm -hmm. pray, you know. Um, but my relationship at that point, I felt like was very stale. Um, and then until I found open, I felt like, I didn't really have hope that our, my relationship with God would get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's, uh, just like we've been talking about, there's there's power and life and community, and you were in a place where it didn't seem like that was going to be an option. Yeah, you. community. I felt like was a very big part of church for me, like getting to know people, getting to know their stories, and getting to connect with them on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. So tell us the story of of uh, Abby met her and her invitation to you on that first day um, and use uh, church appropriate language to yes. do that too. I edited it. <laughs> um, so it was, we were working orientation because we're both orientation leaders and it was like 9 a.m. and she texted me and says, get your butt dressed, we're going to church. That's the part that we edited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, didn't say it that way, but I was like, uh, I'm good, thanks though. And she called me and said, we're going to church. I'm gonna send you the link to their video because they put out a video before, and just watch it and then see what you think. Um, and I watched it and I was intrigued. Um, I didn't really believe it um, because a lot of churches, they say they welcome everyone, but they don't welcome all of you. Um, so for the first few services, I was a little hesitant still. Um, like I heard Jonathan saying, um, all people are welcome here, but it was up until Crystal, one worship service stopped in the middle of it and said, hey, there's something that we need to celebrate, and it was celebrating the first trans deacon in the church, and that was kind of like my cue to be like, oh, maybe, maybe this is real, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so after that, I walked up to her, and I thanked her, and I just said, that kind of gave me like a sign saying like, this is a place where I need to be, um, and I also think had a lot to do with um, Crystal and other people welcoming me and like taking me out to coffee and wanting to hear my story without any redactions and just accepting me and appreciating me as who I am. So, mm -hmm. yeah. that's awesome. And so, from that very first word of life and those people that you met and the community who bear witness to the love of God, um, what changed over these last years in your relationship with God and your relationship with yourself along the way? What what grew from that first seed? I'm gonna read this one off because I can't really. Um, so I feel like my relationship with God isn't stale anymore. So before open, I haven't felt God's presence in my life um, in a while, but now I feel it. And I feel like I have a more intimate relationship with God because I don't have to hide parts of myself from God. Um, and I don't have to chase God anymore because God is willing to meet me in the middle and meet me where I'm at. Um, growing up, God was like some wrathful being, but um, after open, I was being, I was able to see God in a new way and seeing, seeing God as a loving and compassionate God. And yeah, I, I feel like um, I'm at peace now. And we always talk about shalom here, so like holistic flourishing. And I feel like I'm on the path to shalom and I feel like it's attainable for me now. So mm, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. What a, what a journey to go from, from staleness and, and feeling closed to seeing yourself as being on a path to shalom. <laughs> that God is, is in so many ways, Leighton, 
helping you flourish. And it's been awesome over these, uh, over the last journey with you to get to see that um, and the way that you have, have really helped others believe that that was a path for them too, that God loved them and that there was flourishing and welcome and affirmation for them as well. I can count on, I don't have enough hands to count on um, the number of people that you have in the same way that others bear witness to you, that you've bared witness to welcome and love and graciousness. You've been a leader in that very same extending of invitation that Abby extended to you on that very first day. And it's amazing to see how God just returns that to us, uh, that call. He our story in that way. So you're headed out now um, to, to, in the same way that you've been bearing witness to the love of God here, to bear witness in a similar way, like for your vocation, which is another word that we talk about here a lot, kind of your life calling. And so tell us what you're, um, what you're going to be learning about at St. Thomas. And then. So I'm moving to Minneapolis um, at the end of May. It's going to be very cold. Um, <laughs> but, Maybe um, not. Well, actually, it might still be cold Well, in it's May. 40 degrees over there right <laughs> oh, now. No. So. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. It's fine. <laughs> um, but I am uh, getting my master's in leadership and student affairs. So uh, my uh, graduate assistantship is in a diversity and inclusion office. Um, so, yeah, I'll be welcoming students in and making sure they feel heard and valued at the institution. Mm -hmm. So, so what, is, what about what you've learned here is, do you think is going to help you bear witness to that love of God in the places that you go? I think OPEN has created a space where um, people feel valued and welcomed and appreciated. And um, I'm basically there to make sure that students feel valued, heard, and appreciated. And I... I want to be able to create a space up there um, where I feel, where they feel the same way I feel here. I want them to feel like someone's there to listen to me, someone wants to know my story without any bits and pieces being left out. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. So uh, Leighton, is there anything that you'd like to say um, to open uh, as as, uh, as we prepare to send you off with our blessing to, to Minneapolis? Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you to all of you, even if I don't know you. Um, I feel like Open has allowed me to see God in a way that I never thought I'd be able to see God. Um, and I hope that we all kind of take this as a call to action to say, to tell your stories about how God, have you experienced God in Open and um, just basically share like the word and witness to other people that God is a loving God and that God is there with open arms, and, you know. Oh, that's awesome. We are always here with open arms to you, and so whenever you need to thaw out, you are welcome <laughs> back here. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Let's give Leighton a hand. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. It's not that far from Minneapolis to Texas. Southwest flies there, I know. It'll be a thaw out any time. Um, what'd you say, Hannah? I think we're gonna get to go here. You got, yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, we're, uh, we love you, and thank you for sharing your story with us, but most of all, thank you for sharing who you are uh, with us and your, your deep faith and your love of Christ and of God uh, with us. Um, here's what I've seen through through Leighton and from, through others, about the image of God. We said that we saw, we can see the image of God in each other. I've seen the things that we always say in faith are true. That God can take seeds of goodness and invitation and life and welcome, and that God can grow them and bring them to flourishing and wholeness and healing and empowerment and affirmation. And I see you bearing witness to that and you dropping seeds of life and of love everywhere you go. We see that God is a God of welcome and invitation to all of us, and that when we grasp that, it bears fruit. And so know this, that in your life, the welcome and the love that God has poured into your life, God longs to see flourish and is seeking you, as Leighton testified, in the same way that we are seeking God. And so we are, in many ways, in all of our stories and amidst our diversities, a community that's seeking, as Jesus said, the next steps.
to bear witness to the love of God in the places we go. In our Jerusalems, in the places where we sit. In Judea, in the places that we travel. Into Samaria as we cross borders and boundaries to meet people who are different than us, but to bear witness to God's universal love. And even to the ends of the earth, even to Minneapolis as we go, God is calling us to bear witness. And so I want to offer you this challenge, the same one that Leighton lifted up, that as we go this week, may we bear witness in our lives. Maybe even drag along a neighbor who needs to get dressed and come and see for themselves. Um, God's love is non-coercive, so if they say no, just uh, let it be. But there's a world out there who longs to know that God is for them and with them that God is seeking them and loves them. And we are called to bear witness to that truth, just as we've been loved. That is a part of the story of Open. And it's a beautiful story because your story is a part of that. Let's pray together. Gracious, loving God, thank you that you welcome us, but even more than that, God, that you love all of us. God, that you embrace us and empower us and send us out to bear witness to love in our world, just as we've been loved. As we go this week, open our eyes that we might see places where we can bear witness to your life and your love places where we can plant seeds, where we can offer words of life, where we can love in action and authenticity, that we might bear witness to this incredible story of life that's not sealed up in a tomb, but it's exploding through our world with resurrection and renewal, God, with life and love for all people. We thank you for Leighton as we prepare to send Leighton off God, with our blessing, we thank you for his witness and the way uh, that Leighton has been an important part of this community, bearing witness and teaching us more about the wonderful love and image of our infinite God. We pray all of this in your incredible name.